do everything from straightforward cabbages to you know straightforward aortic valve replacements, mitral valve repairs, you know, tavers, the usual stuff that a cardiac fellow is going to need to know very well when they're done. Uh, but again, what really stands out about the University of Iowa is the high complexity of stuff we also do. We're a tertiary care center with the tertiary care center in the state of Iowa. So we get all the referrals of difficult patients, complex redo operations, aortic surgery, including most of the dissections. That level of complexity uh, really adds to the educational value of our fellowship. Our fellows are gonna be really prepared for anything when they're done because they're gonna you know, see and do some tough cases. We have a VAD program, uh, ECMO program, and we do heart transplants and lung transplants here. So all of the tough index cases that a fellow would need, we have here at Iowa. One other thing that uh, I realized when I you know, came on here as staff at Iowa is that we have a broad array of different uh, anesthesiologists in our cardiac section here. They have diverse backgrounds, uh, they're from different areas and from different countries even. Uh, had different training backgrounds from different centers. And because of that, they all bring in something unique, a different perspective, different techniques in cardiac anesthesia. And our fellow gets to see all these different techniques and way of doing things. And then our fellow can decide uh, for him or herself what they want to incorporate into their practice. I think it's a real strength of the program. Everyone's very approachable, uh, easy to talk with, easy to get along with. Uh, you feel like you're a colleague uh, with them, which I think is very important. Welcome to the uh, Cullen Conference Room here at the Department of Anesthesia at University of Iowa. This is where uh, the majority of our didactics are held as far as uh, the cardiac section and our cardiothoracic fellow are concerned. We have a very robust didactic program here. The core of it consists of one-to-one -one lectures between the fellow and a cardiac faculty. It feels more like a conversation and a lot of learning uh, rather than a sit-down lecture and they just uh, regurgitate a bunch of information towards you. Um, it feels very collegial and I, I like that aspect of it. Those all occur on Thursdays. Uh, we also have uh, weekly departmental grand rounds on Tuesdays that are available for our fellows. An important educational activity we put on at the beginning of the year is our Echo Boot Camp. That consists of uh, several uh, basic and focused uh, didactic lectures on the pertinent echo topics that a fellow would need to get started. They also tag along with the cardiology fellows ECHO boot camp that they do as a department. In addition to that, there's a two-day ECMO course that our fellow participates in with other fellows from the Department of Surgery and Critical Care. It consists of some simulation and didactic programs, just getting the fellow oriented with ECMO and how ECMO works. We require that our fellow submits a um, challenging case uh, to the SCA annual conference and we support them by giving them time to attend that conference. We also provide time for them to go to the SCA sponsored Echo Week so they can hone their Echo skills. And I just want to mention that ever since our accreditation, uh, every fellow that we put out has passed their Echo exam. This is our uh, Echo Lab. This is where you can spend time reading your reading the Echoes from the day or the entire time. This is where you spend a lot of time learning Echo. Uh, this is also the room where we usually do our one-on-one -on -one lectures with staff and also substitutes as a echo sim room so you can do a little bit of teaching with some of the residents. Welcome to one of the cardiac rooms here at the University of Iowa. Uh, pretty standard setup for a cardiac room. Uh, we have GB monitors. We use uh, Epic-based um, electronic medical record. We have Philips IE33. Uh, echo machine with a 3D probe. We have some great resources here in the cardiac ORs. So we have a dedicated anesthesia tech that helps us 
to start the case by assisting us with the lines and bringing us supplies to get everything we need to get started. We also have a diffusion team that runs all of our ACTs and our here blood gases on an ISAT machine, and the rest of our labs, including PEGs and COAGs, we sent to Central Core Lab. Just to give you an idea of a typical day here at the University of Iowa, uh, we have three full-time cardiac surgeons, one part-time, uh, with three full-time thoracic surgeons, and a typical day is about three operating rooms uh, running with two of them being pump cases. Uh, that does not include tavers, uh, which are in the hybrid room on, on Tuesdays, and it does not include any cap lab cases. So the type of candidate we're looking for here at the University of Iowa, uh, first and foremost, is just someone that has a strong interest in cardiothoracic anesthesia. Uh, this usually means, uh, you know, a love of cardiopulmonary physiology, uh, a strong desire to take care of the sickest of the sick patients, and, uh, you know, probably most importantly to uh, learn uh, transesophageal echo so they can incorporate that into their practice. Uh, we want a smart person who has a strong anesthesia training thus far from residency, I think being a good communicator is very important in the cardiac OR, and we're looking for that when we interview our candidates. And probably most importantly, uh, someone that is interested in our program here at Iowa and wants to come here. A candidate like that is someone that we're very interested in as well.